Welcome to the deep dive. We're diving into the world of Hyde Irish whiskey today. Oh, yeah. But we're going way beyond just a tasting. Really? We're going deep. Absolutely. Get ready to explore the intricate bond between wood and whiskey and discover why Hyde's motto, it's all about the wood, is more than just a tagline. It's fascinating how deeply Hyde integrates wood into their entire process, wouldn't you say? I, it's the foundation of their unique flavor profiles. Absolutely. So for those unfamiliar, Hyde is a multi-ward winning premium Irish whiskey, mm. and their dedication to wood management goes back generations, right? You're looking at a family history in whiskey dating back to 1640 in County Cork, Ireland. Wow. But what makes Hyde really stand out today is their role as a modern day bonger. Okay. They source exceptional whiskeys and then meticulously finish them in a curated selection of casks. It's like they're bringing back a piece of whiskey history. The independent bonders of old. We're talking about a time when almost every county in Ireland had its own distinct style of whiskey aged and bonded locally. That's right. And that independent spirit is alive and well in Hyde's diverse range. Speaking of their range, one that caught my eye was the Hyde No. 5, finished in burgundy casks. Yeah. Now, I've heard of sherry and rum cask finishes, but burgundy, that's got to be something special. It certainly is. Yeah. The burgundy cask finish speaks to Hyde's commitment to pushing boundaries and exploring unconventional flavor profiles. W what kind of flavors can you coax out of a burgundy cask? What does that wood bring to the party? Imagine notes of rich red fruits, delicate spices, perhaps a hint of tobacco, all layered over Hyde's signature smooth character. Okay. It's a testament to how different wood types can create truly unique tasting experiences. Okay, you're making me thirsty. But seriously, what's the science behind this? How does wood actually transform the flavor of whiskey? Well, it all starts with the wood's chemical composition. Okay. We're talking about compounds like cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin tannins, lactones. Wow. When you apply heat, and Hyde is incredibly precise with their toasting and charring techniques. These compounds break down and transform, releasing different flavor molecules into the whiskey. So it's not just about burning the wood. There's a real art to it. Absolutely. When the level of toast or char influences the final flavor profile. Right. For example, a heavy char might impart smoky chocolatey notes, while a lighter toast could lead to subtle vanilla and caramel flavors. Okay. And Hyde utilizes a variety of techniques to achieve those specific flavor nuances. So they're like culinary artists using fire to unlock hidden layers of flavor within the wood. Yeah, it's a fascinating process, isn't it? And we haven't even touched on how those compounds actually interact with the whiskey during maturation. Let's talk about that. I understand Hyde prefers smaller casks called hogsheads for their maturation process. Right. What difference does size make? It's all about surface area. Okay. A smaller cask means more contact between the whiskey and the wood, leading to a more intense and rapid exchange of flavors. Right. It's a key part of Hyde's ability to create such rich and complex profiles. And then there's the whole matter of where these casks are resting for years. Right. Hyde's home in County Cork, Ireland, has a pretty unique climate. Absolutely. Yeah. Situated on the southern coast of Ireland, County Cork, enjoys a remarkably temperate climate, thanks in part to the warming influence of the Gulf Stream. Wow. This unique microclimate, with its mild winters and warm summers, is considered ideal for aging whiskey, fostering a slow and even maturation process. Wow. So the Gulf Stream is like nature's helping hand in creating that perfect environment for Hyde's whiskeys. It all ties together. It really does. Speaking of things that tie together, we can't overlook the sourcing of those casks. Right. I'm curious, where does Hyde find the casks for these unique finishes? Hyde is incredibly discerning when it comes to cask sourcing. Look. They predominantly use American white oak, okay. prized for its density and flavor contribution. Right. But it's their selection of finishing casks that really showcases their dedication. We're talking hand-selected sherry casks from Spain, rum casks from Barbados, and of course those rare burgundy casks. It sounds like they're sourcing these casks with the same care and attention to detail that goes into blending a fine wine. But why is that so important? I mean, a cask is a cask, right? Not quite. Okay. You see, the previous life of a cask has a profound impact on the final whiskey. Interesting. Those sherry casks, for example, will have absorbed rich, fruity, and nutty flavors from the sherry they once held. Right. Introducing whiskey to that environment creates a completely different flavor profile compared to, say, a cask that previously held bourbon, which might impart notes of vanilla caramel or even a hint of spice. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What? It's almost like each cask has its own story to tell its own unique flavor fingerprint that it imparts to the whiskey. 
Precisely. And Hyde understands that. Mm -hmm. They're not just looking for any cast, they're looking for the perfect cast to complement each specific whiskey. And speaking of complementing the whiskey, there's one more fascinating detail about Hyde's approach that I think you'll find intriguing. Okay, you've got my attention. Ah. What's this intriguing detail about Hyde's approach? Well, unlike many distilleries, Hyde has chosen not to chill filter their single malts. For those of us who might not be familiar with the ins and outs of chill filtering, what does that actually mean? It's a common process in whiskey production where the whiskey is chilled to a very low temperature, okay, causing certain compounds like fatty acids and proteins to solidify. Right. These solidified particles are then filtered out. So it's a bit like straining the whiskey for a smoother, clearer appearance. Exactly. Okay. And while it might sound like a purely aesthetic choice, there's a bit of debate around chill filtering in the whiskey world. Interesting. Some argue that while it enhances clarity, it can also strip away some of the whiskey's complexity, those nuanced flavors and aromas that contribute to its character. So by choosing not to chill filter, Hyde is making a conscious decision to prioritize flavor over that pristine clarity. Precisely. They're prioritizing the integrity of the whiskey, allowing its natural character to shine through, even if it means a slightly cloudier appearance in some cases. It's a testament to their confidence in the quality of their product. It's like they're saying, this is real whiskey, folks. <laughs> Enjoy it in all its natural glory. You got it. And it speaks to a growing trend in the whiskey world, a movement towards transparency and authenticity. So to bring it all back, we've got Hyde Irish Whiskey, a distillery steeped in tradition, yet constantly pushing boundaries with their unique cask finishes and dedication to showcasing the profound influence of wood on whiskey. It's that dedication to quality from the sourcing of the casks to the careful maturation process in County Cork's ideal climate that makes Hyde so fascinating. It really has been a deep dive. I feel like I've not only learned about a new whiskey, but gained a whole new appreciation for the craftsmanship that goes into every bottle. It's a journey of flavor, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So the next time you're savoring a dram, especially if it's a Hyde, take a moment to appreciate the journey it's been on. From the forests where the oak trees grew to the hands of the coopers who crafted those casks, it's a story told in every sip. For more information about high than their range of whiskeys, be sure to check out their website, which we've linked in the show notes. Until next time, cheers to the deep dive.